Today is Tuesday, March the 19th. It is the Solemnity of St. Joseph, patron of the Universal Church. Let's begin this hour praying a prayer written by Pope Pius IX. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. O blessed Joseph, on whom God bestowed the name and dignity of foster father of Jesus, and gave Mary ever virgin to be your most pure spouse, head of the Holy Family on earth, finally chosen by the Vicar of Christ as patron and protector of the universal church established by the Lord Jesus Christ, with the greatest confidence, I implore for that same church militant on earth, your most powerful assistance. Keep, I beseech you, in the special care of that paternal love with which you burn forever the Roman pontiff, all bishops and priests united to the See of Peter. Be the defender of all who labor for the salvation of souls among the sorrows and trials of this life. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, I only got through about half of that prayer to St. Joseph, but uh, go look up the prayer to St. Joseph, proclaimed patron of the Universal Church by blessed Pope Pius IX on December the 8th, the Feast of the Immaculate Conception, 1870. Good morning and welcome to this Tuesday edition of the Sunrise Morning Show here on the EWTN Global Catholic Radio Network. I'm Anna Mitchell coming to you from the studios of Sacred Heart Catholic Radio in Cincinnati, Ohio. Very happy to have you along with us this morning. Matt Swaim is off. Paul Lockman at the controls today. Travis Smith has our video feed up and running if you'd like to watch the sunrise morning show go to sonrisemorningshow.com and click on youtube up this hour a lot to talk about in terms of today's feast of saint joseph father boniface hicks will kick us off discussing saint joseph as a model of silence especially as we approach holy week Marlon De La Torre will join us from knowingisdoing.org and talking about preparing for the beatific vision. We'll return to the topic of St. Joseph with Dr. Leonard De Lorenzo, and uh, he is going to reflect on Joseph as patron of the dying and whether we can consider the crucifixion a happy death. And then we'll wrap things up for the hour with Danielle Bean and her girlfriend's podcast uh, talking about finishing up Lent strong, regaining that motivation to uh, continue whatever penances and the like that we have taken on for this Lenten season as Holy Week is now less than a week away. Right now it's three minutes past. It's time for news. Nearly a thousand Americans have reached out to the State Department for help in Haiti, where gang violence has plunged the nation into chaos. A State Department spokesperson says people have been filling out crisis intake forms online as the U.S. tries to get people out on chartered flights. Not all of the people who filled out a form are trying to leave, but many are, and the government continues to evaluate transportation op options. More than 30 Americans were evacuated to Sunday to Miami on Sunday. Primary elections are set for five states today, although both President Biden and former President Trump have already passed their respective parties' delegate thresholds. Arizona, Florida, Illinois, Kansas, and Ohio will all hold primary elections today. Trump visited Ohio over the weekend, while Biden will be making stops in Nevada and Arizona today. Russian President Vladimir Putin has said he agreed to a prisoner swap involving opposition leader Alexei Navalny just a few days before his death. Mark Mayfield reports. On Sunday, Putin was asked by NBC News whether he had agreed to an exchange of Navalny for several people imprisoned in Western countries. Putin said he agreed on the condition that Navalny never returned to Russia, but unfortunately, he died before the exchange could become reality. Some of Navalny's supporters have alleged that he was murdered to stop the possible prisoner swap that would have seen him and two Americans freed. I'm Mark Mayfield. 
The U.S. Supreme Court heard arguments yesterday in a case over whether the Biden administration's push to remove what they claimed was misinformation on social media platforms violated the First Amendment. The case focuses on communications from administration officials urging social media platforms to police information about the legitimacy of the 2020 election and about the COVID-19 pandemic. Justice Samuel Alito said it was unusual federal officials were repeatedly pressuring social media sites to take down content, adding that he saw a, quote, constant pestering of Facebook. Pope Francis is sharing the details of his life in a new memoir, Life, My Story Through History, which sees the Holy Father talking about his 87 years as revealed to co-author Fabio Marchese Ragona in hours of interviews. An Italian newspaper released excerpts last week ahead of today's release, one of which showed that Pope Francis is not considering resigning from the papacy, as he has said many times before, but he did reveal that if he did resign, he would take the title of Bishop Emeritus of Rome, live at St. Mary Major, and spend his retirement hearing confessions and bringing communion to the sick. And the Environmental Protection Agency is banning the last form of asbestos used in the United States. The government agency called it a major milestone for chemical safety by banning the ongoing use, which has been linked to multiple types of cancer. It applies to a type of asbestos used in car parts. According to the EPA, asbestos exposure is linked to more than 40,000 deaths in the U.S. Did you know asbestos was in cars? I had no idea. Maybe not all cars. I have no idea. Anyway, it sounds like a good development here. I don't know. I don't know. I don't understand chemistry, really. So today is Tuesday, March the 19th. It is the Solemnity of St. Joseph, patron of the Universal Church, spouse of the mother of God, pray for us. Father Boniface Hicks joining us now on the Sunrise Morning Show. He's author, co-author of quite a few books pertinent to today, Through the Heart of St. Joseph. Good morning, Father. Good morning, Annie. Great to be with you. It is great to have you. And we're going to be talking about St. Joseph as a model of silence. And I, I think that this is an image of him that we would probably more readily contemplate during Advent. I mean, given that he's a major figure in the nativity story and, you know, actually in your book, in the chapter on silence, uh, you begin by talking about the Magi approaching Jesus and his mother in the, the story of the Epiphany. But Father, we're about to enter Holy Week. So would you recommend St. Joseph as, as a model and an aid for us to approach Jesus and his mother at Calvary? Yeah, St. Joseph is uh, really a master of the interior life. And uh, part of what we encounter in his silence is not a, a silence that uh, doesn't have anything to say because he's clueless. It's not a silence that uh, is sort of empty and lost and meaningless, his silence is a silence of fullness. Uh, how could he possibly express in words the things that he experienced? Um, his silence is a silence of interior wrestling, and I think that might be uh, something we also bring into Holy Week when he was confronted with this mystery of his wife who conceived by the Holy Spirit how do you handle that one? Where does that show up in the uh, husband handbook? And he wrestled with that. And, and those are the kinds of things that, that we also wrestle with. We're confronted with mysteries, not the same one as that, uh, but with our own mysteries, uncertainties, and have a need for discernment. And as we see a God who loves us beyond what we could ever express in words as Holy Week unfolds, and we see the passion of Christ displayed before us, uh, we also are, are moved to silence. And then there's a temptation uh, that St. Joseph could have had to run away. How do you stay in the presence of a mystery that's so great? And 
there's a temptation. Obviously, all of the apostles ran away in the face of the passion, and we're tempted also to run away, to not really face the consequences of our sins, the great cost of God's love for us. But if we can stay before Him in silence, if we can stay before the mystery in silence, then we find ourselves uh, overwhelmed with a love that is beyond our imagining. And and that's really ultimately what St. Joseph did with the help of an angel. I mean, we can, we can give ourselves a little uh, support. Jesus needed an angel in the agony in the garden. St. Joseph needed an angel in his discernment of what God was doing and how he would possibly be man enough to be what Mary and Jesus needed. And we also can find ourselves overwhelmed, and, and God sends angels to support us and uh, give us the strength to, to face the mystery, to face God's love for us, we could say it. Funny to say it that way, but uh, really it's, it can be hard to receive love so great. So, yeah, I think St. Joseph, at those levels, and then, you know, really as a, as a contemplative, St. Joseph was living constantly in the presence of Jesus and Mary and able to, to estimate that incredible reality and, uh, and, and engage in the interior life. And then, and then St. Joseph also acted out his faith in silence. He didn't just sort of sit there and look at it and then go about his business doing something else, but he was really able to receive uh, what God was sharing and then move into action, an action that was protection, an action that was fatherhood, an action that was faithful love, an action that was was obedient to to God's direction in his life. So a lot of different ways. I think uh, we can look to St. Joseph. I'd, I'd like to hit on that that last point that you just made, um, silence but action in his fatherhood. I really appreciate how you put that because I think about um, my, my life particularly as a mother and, well, let's just say there aren't many opportunities for full-on silence in my life, father, with, uh, with four <laughs> kids under nine. And... And so how would you talk to parents particularly about the ways to, I mean, obviously everyone needs to, to carve out that time to be able to sit in silence. So I don't want to, I don't want to give any of us a pass in that regard, but, but how can we cultivate that interior life amid the chaos of family life? Yeah, I think it's a great question. It's uh um, ultimately, the goal is interior silence, of course, that we have a, that we have some space inside ourselves. I think we know the difference between the kind of interior chaos of uh, ruminating, thoughts going every different direction, all of the 17 things we haven't done uh, collapsing on us, the, the four children and all of their needs all at the same time. And uh, interior silence is being able to open up some space inside ourselves. So We can consider each of those things, but they're not flying at us from every direction. And Mm. and that is a condition of us more than a condition of the the outside world. But uh, then to cultivate uh, exterior silence is necessary for cultivating that interior silence. And I think you said it very well, Annie, that, you know, everybody can make some space. What do you do with the in-between moments? What do you do with the times before the children get up and after they go to bed? What do you do with the moments in the car, on the way to work for five minutes, ten minutes, are we constantly filling our lives with noise? We have to take responsibility for some of that, too. All of us do, no matter whether we have uh, children that are making noise in the back seat or not. Um, You write in the book, when we speak of making room for the word, that necessarily involves silence. So how can Joseph help us do that as we enter Holy Week, Father? Well, I think just uh, looking to his example and, and literally asking for his help. You know, Joseph is a real person, and, uh, and he really loves us. He loves us as a father because we're baptized into Christ, and his whole life was dedicated to taking care of Jesus. And, and so he continues that mission from heaven. He's taking care of you and taking care of me. So I think just to turn to him and ask for Joseph to help me uh, open up a a space inside where I can hear the Word of God, open up a space inside where I can consider what God is doing in my life, 
open up a space inside myself where I can also just rest in how I am loved and see more clearly what God is doing as the passion unfolds before us in this Holy Week. Beautifully put. We've been talking to Father Boniface Hicks. And Father, I just have a point of curiosity. On a solemnity like St. Joseph's Day, how does that get handled in a Benedictine monastery in Lent? Well, we have a lot more singing and uh, incense and... uh, and there'll be some little uh, sweets that show up uh, nice. throughout the day and some wine at dinner. <laughs> Ooh, man. St. Joseph, thank you. Love it. <laughs> you can find Father Boniface Hicks uh, linked at sunrisemorningshow.com and pick up a copy of his book. Talk about entering into silence. My heart really entered into silence reading this chapter in Through the Heart of St. Joseph. So, Father Boniface, thank you so much. My pleasure. Great to be with you. It was great to have you. All right, it's 16 past. We're back with headlines right after this. Central Fabricators is proud to support the Sunrise Morning Show, where you'll get news from the Catholic perspective while keeping you up to date on what's happening in the Vatican as well. It's also a great way to keep in touch with the Catholic faith throughout the week. Central Fabricators, based in Cincinnati, Ohio, is a family-owned business for over 75 years, manufacturing and repairing corrosion-resistant storage tanks, reactors, and pressure vessels. On the web at centralfabricators.com. That's centralfabricators.com. For more than 150 years, the Comboni missionaries have served the poorest and most forgotten people. With our founders and Daniel Comboni as an inspiration, we work for the full development of the human person through evangelization, education, and advocacy. Your donations make a huge impact, and 95% are used to fund our many projects. Find out more at ComboniMissionaries.org. That is ComboniMissionaries.org. Business owners are starting to think outside the box to find new customers. You can reach millions of engaged Catholic listeners by underwriting the Sunrise Morning Show. Each weekday morning, listeners across the U.S. and around the globe can hear your message for your business, ministry, or nonprofit on the Sunrise Morning Show. To find out how it works, email me, Leah, at sacredheartradio.com. That's Leah at sacredheartradio.com. Each weekday, we'll dive into the timeless teachings of our Catholic faith, drawing upon the wisdom of the ages to navigate the challenges of today. Together, we'll seek truth, find inspiration, and forge a deeper connection with God. I'm Deacon Harold Burke Sivers, and I invite you to join me for Beacon of Truth, today at 4 p.m. Eastern on EWTN Radio. Eighteen past now on the Sunrise Morning Show. Let's take a look at headlines. Nearly a thousand Americans have reached out to the State Department for help in Haiti, where gang violence has plunged the nation into chaos. Pope Francis has released a new memoir today on this anniversary of his installation as Pope, Life, My Story Through History. And ahead of EU parliamentary elections this summer, Caritas Europa is urging candidates to embrace policies that reflect solidarity, human rights, and global justice. Next newscast coming up in about 11 minutes at the bottom of the hour, right here on the Sunrise Morning Show. So the Solemnity of St. Joseph, EWTN.com, is a great place to go to enter into this solemnity, to grow closer to St. Joseph, be strengthened by his example over at EWTN.com slash St. Joseph. That's EWTN.com slash S-T Joseph. You can find an ebook, How to Pray with St. Joseph. It contains a collection of special prayers that you can use It uh, has many, many prayers in honor of the spouse of the Blessed Virgin. You can also learn why we celebrate a solemnity of St. Joseph. What does the Bible have to say about St. Joseph? What's so special about him anyway? And also, um, can you eat meat in Lent? 
on St. Joseph's Day. Of course, today is not a, you know, prescribed day of fasting and abstinence, usually, you know, Tuesday in Lent. But uh, today is a solemnity, and we just heard from Father Boniface Hicks that uh, even the Benedictine monks get to drink a little wine tonight at dinner and eat a few sweets for the solemnity. So today is a day of celebration, even amid the Lenten fast. So you can find links, videos, devotions, prayers, and that ebook, Learn How to Pray with St. Joseph, all at EWTN.com slash ST Joseph. It's 21 minutes past the hour. I'm Father Rob Jack. Join me this afternoon for Driving Home to Faith, where Dr. Joseph Salot will discuss over-the-counter contraceptives and abortion pills. Alan Migliorato will share his adventure Catholic parenting tip this week. I'll reflect on the solemnity of St. Joseph, the spouse of Mary, plus frequent traffic and weather to get you home safely. That's this afternoon beginning at 4 on Sacred Heart Radio. You're on the road to Christ the King. Driving home to faith. Support for Sacred Heart Radio is from Hoting Realtors. The current real estate market is challenging, but the professionals at Hoting Realtors are equipped with the market knowledge and tools needed to make home buying and selling easier. 513-451-4800 and at Hoting.com. Support for Sacred Heart Radio is from Molly Maid of Westchester. With 30 years of trusted, quality service and a 100% satisfaction guarantee. 1-800-MOLLY-MAID or at mollymade.com. Molly Maid, a clean you can trust. Wimberg Landscaping, a proud supporter of Sacred Heart Radio, has been beautifying properties for over 40 years. Wimberg offers professional one-stop landscaping services from initial design and installation of all plant materials and hardscapes to ongoing maintenance, including lawn service, leaf and snow removal. Wimberg Landscaping. 513-271-2332 or on the web at wimberglandscaping.com. That's wimberglandscaping.com. Support for Sacred Art Radio is from Andiamo Artisan Bakery in Hamilton's German Village, featuring authentic Italian sweets to grace your table, such as Sicilian almond paste cookies, cannoli and tiramisu. Celebrate the season with Irish soda bread and St. Joseph's bread. And for Easter, sweet ricotta pies and walnut kolache, in-store or online at andiamo-artisan-bakery.com. That's A-N-D-I-A-M-O, andiamo-artisan-bakery.com. It's 23 minutes past the hour. You're listening to the Sunrise Morning Show on the EWTN Global Catholic Radio Network. Happy to have you along with us on a Tuesday morning. Marlon De La Torre joining us again on the Sunrise Morning Show. He's Senior Director of the Department of Evangelization for the Diocese of Columbus. And he writes at knowingisdoing.org. Good morning, Marlon. Go Bucks. Good morning, Annie. Go Bucks. So we're going to be talking about preparing for the beatific vision. And mm. just so we're all on the same page as sure. we kick this off. What is the beatific vision? It's very simply, it's it's the, the contemplation of God in his heavenly glory. And so what that means is that when the time comes for us to see him, we see him in his eternal glory, uh, the beauty that he is, the truth that he is, and that because of our nature uh, ceasing, because of the time that it is, it is for us to come to see him. So our, our life on earth ends. Now we get to see him if all goes well that there is an eternal vision that we see of him, an encounter. And this is basically contemplating God in, in true beauty, in true glory. Or in other words, we get to finally see him for who he is uh, in paradise, heaven. Mm -hmm. And so th this is probably one of the greatest gifts that we can receive from him because now we know that we are with him. We know we're in his presence. And so his glory, his love, his truth, his beauty now makes more sense than ever before because we can see it. We can see it face to face. We don't have to hide. We don't have to be uh, bashful or shy or run away from it as our first parents did after the fall. Now we get to encounter him. And so th that's really the beauty of the beatific vision that we're so awestruck and overwhelmed by his majesty that uh, how can we not want to be in his presence? So that in, in essence is the beatific vision. And this desire 
for the beatific vision is really written into us from the moment of our creation, is it not? Absolutely. That's what we tend to forget sometimes, unfortunately, is that we were made in an image and a vision of how he intended us to be. And so, and that is a byproduct, I dare say, of the beatific vision. It's how he sees us, how he wanted to create us, and one, how he wants us to interact with him, and two, to prepare to interact with him, not just here on earth, but ultimately to be at home with him in heaven. And so that is part of this, just the grand majesty of who God is and how he made us. And so then, what is the first step, do you think, in preparing ourselves for the beatific vision? You know, it, it's, it's as simple as recognizing that we're made by him. Uh, especially in this day and age, we seem to have a distraction or a, a disdain for who we are, how we were made by God. And the opposite should take effect in the fact that we should embrace uh, not only our body and how it was made, but also the fact that he gave us a soul. And that's very important that we have this this combination of body soul composite that our intellect, our will, our body and soul were literally manufactured and made out of love, mm. and that these beautiful attributes should not be ignored nor be denied, uh, because we tend to deny the fact that He gave us the ability to rationalize and to think, but really th- this allows us to see Him, it allows us to understand why He brought a Son. Uh, who took on human form, why we're able to even have, dare say, a conversation with him in an intimate way. Uh, so that should be our first task and really recognizing the fact that, look, he loved me so much, he made me in an image and likeness that is so beautiful, so rich. How can I not want to? Yeah. What What is the importance of silence in this preparation? Oh, Lord. Um, it's a great question. I think when you look at the ability to recognize yourself for who you are, then nothing else really matters. And what I mean by that is just focus on, on our Lord, you, him, your relationship. And so any distraction, anything of of, of noise, of music or, or TV or paraphernalia really doesn't matter. Silence is the key. Silence allows you to really contemplate who you are with him. It allows you to really dive into this, this search for meaning that comes from God and the fact that now I realize that uh, I am his son, I am his daughter. And so when you do that well and you block out all the noise, it really gives you the ability to see him, to understand him. And also it helps you fall in love with him more because you, you'll yeah. find other holy distractions like sacred scripture, mm-hmm. like Shio Divina, a, a, a basic prayer meditation directed towards our Lord that allows you to see him and to receive him. I think that's probably the gift of silence. And then what does suffering have mm. to do with this? That's probably the thing that we don't want to learn about the most. The <laughs> suffering really, it, it, it embraces the fact that God loved us so much. And we see this infamous John 14, 6 or John three sixteen 16 uh, verses all the time. But really, suffering is the key to the beatific vision. It means that we're willing to embrace what God endured through his son, we're really to see why Christ came and how he offered himself as a salvific work to save us. And that that cross means something. I mean, whether we read in Isaiah or we read in John's gospel or Matthew's gospel, there's a salvific reality to suffering. The suffering is a joy. It's a gift. It opens the door to see the beatific vision and it shuns anything else that is unholy. And I think that's the key to suffering. When we look at this final act of faith, that when we die, there, there is a... a a part of that that requires suffering, uh, not just amongst ourselves, but those around us. But that's the intention. The intention is that we shed away the old and that the new awaits. And, and that is the vision of our Lord. Yeah. I mean, this is what we sign up for at baptism, yeah. isn't it, Marlon? Absolutely. I mean, it, 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 it's, a, it's a great ticket if we see it for what it is. Yep. Amen to that. You can go read yeah. more about it at Marlon De La Torre's site, which is Knowing is Doing dot org and you can find it linked at sunrise morning show.com marlon thank you so much and go bucks appreciate it Annie. go bucks even if they're in the nit that's right <laughs> it's fine it's like every team that we care about here on the sunrise morning show is right. in the nit this year oh well it's, okay. it's all right. right it's fine we still have the football season <laughs> marlon have a great day you too Annie. thanks you can find all of our guests linked at sonrisemorningshow.com. Half past the hour now on the Sunrise Morning Show. It's time for news.
Nearly a thousand Americans have reached out to the State Department for help in Haiti, where gang violence has plunged the nation into chaos. Mark Mayfield reports. A State Department spokesperson says people have been filling out crisis intake forms online as the U.S. tries to get people out on chartered flights. Not all of the people who filled out a form are trying to leave, but many are, and the government continues to evaluate transportation options. More than 30 Americans were evacuated Sunday to Miami. I'm Mark Mayfield. Primary elections are set for five states today, although both President Biden and former President Trump have already racked up enough delegates to clinch their party's nominations for president in November. Arizona, Florida, Illinois, Kansas, and Ohio, nonetheless, are all holding primary elections today. Trump visited Ohio over the weekend, while Biden will be making stops in Nevada and Arizona on the campaign trail today. The U.S. Supreme Court heard arguments yesterday in a case over whether the Biden administration's push to remove what they claimed was misinformation on social media platforms violated the First Amendment. The case focuses on communications from administration officials urging platforms to police information about the legitimacy of the 2020 election and the COVID-19 pandemic. The Pope's new memoir is being released today on this anniversary of his installation to the papacy. Life, My Story Through History sees the Holy Father talking about his 87 years as revealed to co-author Fabio Marchese Ragona in hours of interviews. An Italian newspaper released excerpts last week. Vatican News reports the book spans more than 300 pages, covering all aspects of the Holy Father's life, from his relationship with his family and his grandparents, their emigration to Argentina in 1929, a, quote, little derailment during his seminary period, and World War II. One excerpt that sh- one excerpt showed Pope Francis is not considering resigning the papacy, which he has reiterated many times. But he said in the interview, if he did resign, he would take the title of Bishop Emeritus of Rome, live at St. Mary Major, and spend his retirement hearing confessions and bringing communion to the sick. Ahead of EU parliamentary elections this summer, Caritas Europa is urging candidates to embrace policies that reflect the values of solidarity, respect of human rights, and global justice. From Vatican Radio, Lisa Zingarini reports. In the memorandum, Caritas Europe outlines five key issues that should be prioritized by the next European Parliament and Commission. The first recommendation is to guarantee effective, adequate and inclusive labour markets and social protection for all by carefully monitoring the full implementation of the 20 principles of the European Pillar of Social Rights and asking in particular the European Commission to present a proposal for a directive framework of minimum income standards within the Parliament's next mandate. According to Caritas, the second priority is to guarantee high-quality, accessible and affordable social services for all, also by supporting providers of non-profit services. The memorandum goes on to address the hot-button issue of migration, urging European leaders to promote migration and asylum policies that respect EU values, the UN Refugee Convention, human rights and the dignity of all people. Caritas calls in particular for promoting expanded safe and regular pathways to Europe for people in need of international protection. The fourth recommendation calls for promoting locally-led humanitarian action and development in the EU's external action. Finally, Caritas Europe urges the EU political leaders to actively support efforts for justice and sustainable development in the Global South. According to the Catholic organization, the European Parliament must be a leading voice pushing for EU institutions to avoid inward-looking and short-term strategies and rather promote fair policies, especially in the sectors of trade, agriculture and migration. I am Lisa Zingarini. That's the news. It's 35 minutes past the hour.
When you go to sacredheartradio.com and click subscribe, your inbox will let you know when your favorite guest will be on the Sunrise Morning Show and driving home the faith. To know when your favorite guests are on, go to sacredheartradio.com and click subscribe. Schneller Knockleman Plumbing, Heating, and Air is a proud supporter of Sacred Heart Radio. Stay warm and comfortable during the coldest of weather with Schneller Knockleman for your heating repair, replacement, and maintenance. Find us at skpha.com, skpha.com. Support for Sacred Heart Radio is from Honda East, the place to find a brand new Honda or pre-owned vehicle with no haggle, no hassle pricing. Honda East, just off I-275 on Beachmont Avenue. Help me, Honda East, get the car that I want. Online at hondaeastcincy.com. Working to see the culture of life prevail in the Miami Valley, Dayton Right to Life is here to protect God's gift of life through law, education, and community action, from fertilization to natural death. Find Dayton Right to Life online at DaytonLife.org. That's DaytonLife.org. It's 24 minutes before the hour on the Solemnity of St. Joseph, Tuesday, March the 19th. Your forecast is brought to you on Sacred Heart Catholic Radio by Schneller Knockleman Plumbing, Heating, and Air online at SKPHA. Dot com. Windy, but a little warmer today. Right now, temperatures in the lower 30s as you're heading out the door. For Cincinnati, mostly sunny skies today with a high of 52 degrees. A few clouds tonight with an overnight low of 36. Mostly sunny and breezy again tomorrow with a high of 51 degrees. For the Miami Valley Dayton area, increasing winds and a mix of clouds and sun today with a high of 52 degrees. A few clouds tonight and an overnight low of 37. It'll be mostly sunny skies tomorrow and a high of 48 degrees. This is Sacred Heart Catholic Radio, 740 a.m., 910 a.m. Online at sacredheartradio.com. Joining us again on the Sunrise Morning Show is Dr. Leonard De Lorenzo. He's with the McGrath Institute for Church Life at Notre Dame and is author of many books. Most pertinent to our discussion this morning, Model of Faith, Reflecting on the Litany of St. Joseph. Dr. De Lorenzo, welcome back. Thank you. Good morning. It is good to have you. And in honor of the Feast of St. Joseph, we are going to talk about one of the titles of St. Joseph in the Litany, Patron of the Dying. Why does he have that title? You know, I think we come to that title because he, and we'll see this in some art in certain churches, he was surrounded at his death, at least as tradition gives it to us, by the Blessed Mother and by our savior jesus he i think as we reflect on this spiritually is the one who lived the just and obedient life and yet still tasted the sorrow of death that each of us will taste that sorrow that includes being separated from loved ones who we see in their eyes what we are leaving and what we will miss and yet at the same time in joseph we have the model of the gratitude for a life well lived and being surrounded by our own salvation. And so to call him the patron of the dying is to recognize him as the one who has gone before us as a father would, to taste the death that we hope, in fact, to reach, the, the death that is lived in obedience and holiness, in trust and hope, open to the mercy that we all need from our Lord and Savior. You know, we pray a prayer. There's a, a pretty, um, po- I guess you could say popular prayer um, to St. Joseph for a happy death. What makes death happy? I think it is precisely the meeting of sorrow and gratitude. Mm-hmm. I think if there's no sorrow at death, and we might think that is the happy death, the death without sorrow, but there's no sorrow in death. It would be a sign that we haven't loved fully or loved well. That Mm -hmm. parting should be sorrowful. There is uh, a pain of separation from this world that we hopefully have loved, from the lives that we were given to live, from the people that we have invested ourselves in and that have invested themselves in us, and perhaps even the sorrow for repentance, for this need for forgiveness. Those are all, in fact, good signs. That sign, those signs of grief over death. But at the same time, on the other side, what we would see, I think, as more fitting, perhaps, of a happy death 
is the gratitude, the gratitude for the love of others, the gratitude for the opportunity to give ourselves away, the gratitude for the grace to be able to do that, to give ourselves away faithfully, and at times we could say with great courage. So I believe that the happy death is not just the death of gratitude, not just the death of consolation, but indeed the death that includes sorrow and sorrow well embraced and sorrow that is really the other side of our great loves. Mm. So, Dr. De Lorenzo, this time next week, we will be in the midst of Holy Week. And mm. of course, we're, we're walking the Via Dolorosa with Christ up Calvary and, and culminating in the crucifixion. Was the death of Christ a happy death? Hmm. I believe the death of Christ, strangely to say this, is a happy death. He, of course, is given over into the hands of others who mistreat him, who take from him his life. But preceding that, both chronologically and in the order of grace, he has given himself into their hands. That is to say, his giving precedes their taking of him. And that giving of himself into the hands of others who treat him with malice is underwritten and authorized by the giving of the Father who has given his Son for the life of the world. And so we see in Jesus, of course, the greatest of all sorrow, the sorrow over a world that has rejected him. But that is sorrow not simply for his own sake and not for the sake of his father, but sorrow for the world that does not receive him, which means it is the reflection of his great love for the world, of the father's great love for the world. So in all that sorrow that we see, we see, in other words, the evidence of the love that has been given into the life and through the death of Jesus. Of course, there is also, and this is harder to see, I think, in the crucifixion, the gratitude. It is the completion of his work of thanks to the Father, the Father who never leaves him, who holds him in his hands, who gives him his mission, who makes him who he is, and he gives everything back to the Father in thanksgiving, his great Eucharist, his Eucharistia. And so what Joseph does, to bring this back to Joseph, is you can say on the one hand, it anticipates his son's own death. But on the other hand, it's his own, as a disciple, his own participation, might we say, in Jesus's death. Joseph, who, as a parent who loved this child, was always also giving this child away, not holding on to this child, releasing him. He was dying to himself from the very beginning, from the first time we meet him in Matthew's gospel. And that dying to self, giving away, is itself both sorrow, but also gratitude, a way of giving back to the God who has given us everything. Yeah, I mean, he didn't technically die a martyr's death and yet gave his life away, as you say. And even that giving of his life away is hidden in the obscurity and silence of history. We yeah. don't have the scene. We get it in sacred art, and I think that pious art is important for us. But it's not testified to in scripture. It's one of these many things in the life of Joseph that is hidden from our view. So even the anonymity, you could say, or the, the hiddenness of Joseph's death is a way in which his death anticipates many of our own deaths. Most of us will die, as we see you know, from the grand scope of history, a rather anonymous death from a rather anonymous life, which is hard for us to hear because we think oftentimes more of ourselves than that, but for the vast majority of us, our lives are papered over by anonymity. And Joseph, mm -hmm. as a good father, has gone there for us first in obedience to the call and the will of God out of love for his son as a good father and a faithful servant. You know, in your chapter in, in Model of Faith on uh, reflecting on the title of, of Joseph, patron of the dying, uh, you started off by saying, Joseph held in his arms Jesus, whom death could not hold. And, you know, I, I was thinking about that. There's this homily by, by attributed to, to St. Epiphanius that says that the first ones to recognize Jesus in the harrowing of hell were, were Adam and Eve because they remembered the sound of his footsteps walking in the garden. Wow. But... I imagine that Jesus 
had some special greetings for Joseph in that <laughs> moment as well. <laughs> yes, I think I, you know, that first line, which kind of seeks to capture some of the paradox here, of course, in the tenderness and the strength of Joseph holding this child, hit the child that he took at his own. That was, I think, prompted by some spiritual reflections I had read, and I don't remember where, unfortunately, but it was likening Joseph's um, tender care and daily uh, tending to the child Jesus as a continual act of adoration. And I really appreciated that insight that as he gazes on the face of this child, he's gazing on the word who has made flesh and the image of the father. And he holds in his arms the life of the world, the life that exceeds the world, which death itself, as we say, could not hold. He broke the bounds of death and yet Joseph was dignified enough to be able to hold him. It's just incredible. Thank you so much, Dr. Leonard De Lorenzo. You can find his book, Model of Faith, linked at sunrisemorningshow.com. Danielle Bean joins us next. It's 14 till. Support is from Solidarity Health Share. Do you have an insurance plan that pays for everything, even things that violate your beliefs? Have you ever felt there has to be a better way, but didn't know you had any options? If you answered yes, I've got some good news for you there is a better way and a more affordable way. Solidarity HealthShare can save you hundreds of dollars each month while actually supporting your beliefs. Because the best news is that Solidarity HealthShare costs a whole lot less than insurance. It's time to jump in and put your money where your faith is and put some money back into your wallet at the same time. Join Solidarity HealthShare, a faith-based healthcare sharing community. Prices start as low as $384 a month for families. Call to see how much you can save, 844-334-3245. That's 844-334-3245. Solidarity HealthShare, 844-334-3245. Did you give up coffee or caffeine for Lent? Be sure to check out the tea and decaf offerings from the Mystic Monks of Wyoming. Find a link to Mystic Monk Coffee at sunrisemorningshow.com. When you make a purchase after clicking our link, we earn a commission to help support the show. The monks also have their seasonal favorite Pasca Java available for you to buy now in anticipation of your Easter Sunday feast. And why not add a Sunrise Morning Show mug to include in the Easter basket? Find those mugs and a Mystic Monk Coffee link at sonrisemorningshow.com. EWTN Global Catholic Network is the largest religious media network in the world. 11 global TV channels, English and Spanish radio networks with over 500 AM and FM radio affiliates, one of the largest Catholic websites in the world, dozens of podcasts every week, social media, electronic and print news services, and EWTN publishing. EWTN is the global Catholic network. For more about EWTN, visit EWTN.com. Joining us again on the Sunrise Morning Show is Danielle Bean. You can connect with her at her site, daniellebean.com. Invite her to speak or lead a retreat. That's where you can listen to her girlfriend's podcast and subscribe to her fairly new Substack, where you can get special content. Danielle, good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm doing fine. Happy to be talking to you. And you've got a recent girlfriend's podcast on dealing with a lack of motivation, which never happens to any of us, right? I mean, why would you want to cover such a topic, Danielle? Yeah, it happens to all of us. And you know what's really funny is I've noted this about myself and other people that talk to me about this, that whenever we're struggling with this lack of motivation, when we're tempted to procrastinate, when we're actively procrastinating, <laughs> we feel like we're the only people who behave that way. Yeah. We feel like we're just losers because... We can't get this thing done, and yet this is this is part of the human struggle. This is part of the human experience. It's a very common thing. It is, absolutely. So I want to talk about this in light of Lent, but before we actually get to the Lent part of it, um, can you quickly run us through the ideas that you have? I mean, in terms of, like, strategies that have worked for you in trying to get back on track when, when you are feeling unmotivated? Yeah, sure. I mean, well, I hope you're not asking me to actually remember what I said in my podcast. <laughs> no, um, just whatever comes to mind, Danielle, please. <laughs> no, I did share 10 different ideas. Um, one that people particularly 
found interesting and I got some feedback on is the idea of making mini goals. And actually, I did a whole podcast about the idea of making mini goals. And Mm -hmm. by this, I mean breaking down your goals from this great big daunting thing that you need to accomplish into small doable things so you can begin taking very, very ridiculously tiny steps in the right direction. And that really builds motivation. It builds momentum. You start to feel good. You start to feel like you're actually accomplishing something, even when it's something super dumb. Like if you, if you have a goal of, let's, let's say, a spiritual goal, you want to be reading scripture, you could say, oh, I, I need to read, you know, a chapter of the Gospels every morning. And, you know, and you might do that for a while, but then you might skip a day and you start feeling like a loser, and that kind of has a, a downward or spiral get, for you. Or you can't get through one particularly long chapter, for instance. Yes, yeah. right, right. Stuff like that happens. So I would say setting a mini goal related to that would be uh, every morning I'm going to open my Bible. Make it that simple. And, of course, you're probably a lot of times going to do some reading once you've opened your Bible. <laughs> hopefully, but yeah. If you op- yeah, hopefully, but make that the goal so that you're, you've always accomplished it, right? It's that small. It's that simple. And even on a day where you open your Bible and you get immediately interrupted and you don't get back to it, you can still say, hey, I opened my Bible today. Mm-hmm. That was the goal. Something as small as that. And, you know, we hesitate to make these kinds of mini goals because they feel dumb. And it feels like, no, no, that's not my goal. That's not what I want to do. And yet we, we need to remember that this is how the human psyche works. We need to be setting ourselves up to win, to feel like we are actually accomplishing something. And it's a little bit of a mind game that you play with yourself, but it absolutely works. I'm astonished at how well it works. Yeah. You've got this handy little list of takeaways over at the Girlfriend's site to um, to help us remember these things. So I'm going to read through the rest of your bullet points here, Danielle, if you don't sure. mind. Is that okay? All right. So yeah, of course. Uh, reflect on the root cause of your lack of motivation. Set small Mm -hmm. goals to build momentum, as you were just describing. Find inspiration from others or through quotes, books, or music. Change your environment to shift your mindset. Be kind to yourself and avoid negative self-talk. Take breaks in your work to recharge. Seek support from others who encourage and inspire you. Focus on the why behind your goal to stay motivated. Try something new to spark creativity and enthusiasm celebrate your progress and your milestones. So let's say, Danielle, that I'm losing motivation a little more than halfway through Lent with my Lenten (laughs) penance. Of course, this is not Mm. me specifically, Danielle. I'm speaking in general. Um, how, How would you use some of this advice to kind of regain some momentum in in our Lenten journey? Yeah, well, I think starting with that, reflecting on your why is important. Like, take a big step back and look at what is Lent? Like, what is our purpose here? What are we trying to accomplish in Lent? Or more importantly, what are we trying to allow God to accomplish in us during Lent? And allow yourself to kind of switch your mindset from this very small kind of granular way of looking at what you're doing for Lent, like, oh, I I made this commitment and I messed up here and I skipped this day and whatever, you know, all of that. Take that big step back and think, you know, how is, how is God calling me to grow closer to him during this Lenten season? Why is that important to me? Why is my faith important to me? Why do I want to grow in holiness? Why is this a goal? And I think really reminding yourself of the reason why it's a goal can give you that motivation to recommit to those smaller things, those smaller goals that you have, those things that you might be tempted to kind of push away as they, they haven't worked out or whatever. But so they can help you, that, that bigger mindset can help you to kind of refocus on your real why and why this is important and just remind you of the, you know, these smaller steps are part of a much larger thing that you truly value in your life. Yeah. And, you know, there, I, I've been telling folks, there are some years when you do Lent and then there are some years when Lent does you. Um, <laughs> and when in the midst of a year when Lent does me, I think um, something that I would add to this list in in staying motivated, and I'm curious of your thoughts, you know, you have this focus on the why behind your goal. Um, maybe it's focus on the why behind God's goal. Right. Yeah. And isn't that an important shift, right? And, you know, sometimes we get caught up in this 
it's almost like a temptation towards self-reliance, right? Because mm-hmm. you can have a Lent and you feel like a rock star about it if you did really great at all the things you wanted to do. Well, that's not really the point, right? Mm-hmm. It's about what, what God wants to accomplish in you. So ultimately, we do need to move away from this idea that we are we are accomplishing our Lent and in, in the end be open to the ways in which God wants to do something in your heart, do something to change you, do something to help you grow closer to him during the Lenten season. And it might or might not have anything to do with your precious list that you made on Ash Wednesday. Amen to that. We've been talking to Danielle Bean, and you can listen to her girlfriend's podcast at daniellebean.com. And Danielle, you've got all kinds of good stuff for Lent um, uh, over at the Substack, right? How do listeners find that on your site? Yeah, go to daniellebean.com and subscribe there, or, or you can go to daniellebean.substack.com. I would love to have you join us because we've got special content coming out every week for Lent, and it's not too late to join us. Nope, definitely not. And you can find daniellebean.com linked at sunrisemorningshow.com. I just got a text message from... Sunrise Morning Show legal, political, and sometimes cultural analyst Ken Craycraft, who writes, Lenten failure is a feature, not a bug. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. And of course, today we can take, you know, a little bit of a break. I don't, I wouldn't recommend going crazy, but a little bit of a break from the Lenten penances for this solemnity of St. Joseph as we celebrate the spouse of the Blessed Virgin Mary, the official title for him, foster father of the Son of God, patron of the Universal Church, St. Joseph, pray for us. We got another hour of the Sunrise Morning Show coming up for most of our affiliates here on the EWTN Global Catholic Radio Network. Every time you turn on Sacred Heart Catholic Radio, you hear in the words and actions of Jesus Christ just how much God loves us. Yeah, there's no greater peace than to know what God has prepared for those who love Him. So we must always try to make His love known to others. To give access to God's love today, tell someone about Sacred Heart Radio. 7.40 a.m., 9.10 a.m. at the Sacred Heart Radio app because... What can compare to the love of God? Lent is an opportune time to reflect on mortality. Learn more about the importance of the Catholic funeral rites and how to pre-plan. Gate of Heaven Cemetery of the Archdiocese of Cincinnati is hosting a pre-planning seminar Tuesday, March 26th at 11 a.m., 2 p.m., or 6 p.m. Find out why the decision to be in a Catholic cemetery is so important to you and your family. Gate of Heaven, 513-489-0300 and at gateofheaven.org. Just a short 10-minute drive from downtown Cincinnati, Carmel Manor in Fort Thomas, Kentucky is pleased to offer quality Catholic health care with a modern campus overlooking the Ohio River and Carmelite sisters in residence to address your spiritual needs. Mass is offered six days per week, just steps from your private room. Three hot meals a day offer time for fellowship and reflection. 24-hour skilled nursing is available if needed. Catholic long-term care close to the city, Carmel Manor. The difference is love. For information, carmelmanor.com. Support for Sacred Heart Radio is from Ken Herbert Plumbing, licensed in Ohio and Kentucky. All their plumbers are bonded, insured, drug tested, and background checked for peace of mind. Rated A plus from the BBB. Ken Herbert Plumbing, 513-383-2974. Hi, I'm Anna Mitchell, MC for Heartbeats for Life 5K, sponsored by Cincinnati Right to Life, Saturday, April 20th at Lunkin Airport Playfield. It's a day of food, family, and fun to keep hearts beating in Ohio. Register at CincinnatiRightToLife.org. Support for Sacred Heart Radio is from Bridgetown Finer Meats, presenting their gourmet fish dinner, available every Friday in Lent, featuring two delectable courses that change every week. Fresh gourmet seafood such as crab stuffed lemon sole with asparagus, parmesan crusted Chilean sea bass with risotto, or salmon wellington. Every week offers a different dinner. Reservations are required and wine pairings are available. The menu is online at bridgetownfinermeats.com. That's bridgetownfinermeats.com. You rely on your car, so rely on the experts at Fort Mitchell Garage, a proud supporter of Sacred Heart Radio. They can do it all from brakes, tires, and heating and cooling to towing and collision repair and more. 
Fort Mitchell Garage on Dixie Highway in Park Hills. On the web at fortmitchellgarage.com. I'm Father Dan Schmidtmeyer, Director of Vocations for the Archdiocese of Cincinnati. Thank you for listening to Sacred Heart Catholic Radio. 740 WNOP Newport, 910 WPFB Middletown, or get the app, stream, podcast, and more at sacredheartradio.com. Arise, it's a new day. Hear his word, let us pray. The sunrise morning show. Hey, a way to start your day. We're continuing our way on this Tuesday, March the 19th. It is the Solemnity of St. Joseph. The Lord is the giver of holiness. Let us turn to him and pray in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Holy God, raise us up to new life in holiness. Lord our God, you called our fathers in faith to walk before you in holiness of heart. May we follow in their footsteps and obey your command to be perfect. You chose Joseph the righteous to care for your son in childhood and youth. Teach us to care for Christ's body by caring for our brothers and sisters. You entrusted the earth to mankind, to people it and make it prosper. Inspire us to work wholeheartedly in this world, seeking always to give you glory. Father of all mankind, do not forget what your hands have made. Grant that all who work may have secure employment and a fitting standard of living. Father, you entrusted our savior to the care of St. Joseph. By the help of his prayers, may your church continue to serve its Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning and welcome to hour two of the Sunrise Morning Show here on the EWTN Global Catholic Radio Network. I suppose for some of you, it's hour one, no matter how long you've been listening or if you're just starting, we're happy to have you along on this Solemnity of St. Joseph. I'm Anna Mitchell, Matt Swaim is off today, Paul Lockman at the controls, and Travis Smith has our video feed up and running at our YouTube page. Go to sonrisemorningshow.com and click on the YouTube button and you can watch the Sunrise Morning Show. Dr. Benjamin Lewis will be joining us in just a few minutes to Talk about the newly translated hymn for Louds on this feast, the Solemnity of St. Joseph. Father Peregrine Fletcher is going to join us. He's got a new children's book that's being released today called The Snail and the King. It's a parable. We'll talk to Father Peregrine about it. Steve Ray will be along to continue our very long-running series on stuff in the Bible, and we'll wrap things up for the hour with Chris McGregor from Discerning Hearts with our selection from the Office of Readings, which, spoiler alert, is taken for today's feast, the Feast of St. Joseph. Lots of Joseph to get to today, that is for sure. Right now it's three minutes past, and news is a service of Central Fabricators and centralfabricators.com. Nearly a 1,000 Americans have reached out to the State Department for help in Haiti, where gang violence has plunged the nation into chaos. A State Department spokesperson says people have been filling out crisis intake forms online as the U.S. tries to get people out on chartered flights. Primary elections are set for five states today. Both President Biden and former President Trump have already passed their respective parties' delegate delegate threshold to clinch the nominations, but Arizona, Florida, Illinois, Kansas, and Ohio nonetheless all hold elections today. Trump visited Ohio over the weekend. Biden will make stops in Nevada and Arizona today. Russian President Vladimir Putin says he agreed to a prisoner swap involving opposition leader Alexei Navalny just a few days before his death. Mark Mayfield reports. On Sunday, Putin was asked by NBC News whether he had agreed to an exchange of Navalny for several people imprisoned in Western countries. Putin said he agreed on the condition that Navalny never returned to Russia, but unfortunately, he died before the exchange could become reality. 
Some of Navalny's supporters have alleged that he was murdered to stop the possible prisoner swap that would have seen him and two Americans freed. I'm Mark Mayfield. The U.S. Supreme Court heard arguments yesterday in a case over whether the Biden administration's push to remove what they claimed was misinformation on social media platforms violated the First Amendment. The case focuses on communications from administration officials urging those platforms to police information about the legitimacy of the 2020 election, as well as the COVID-19 pandemic. Justice Samuel Alito said it was unusual that federal officials were repeatedly pressuring the social media sites to take down content, adding that he saw a, quote, constant pestering of Facebook. On this 11th anniversary of his installation as Pope, Pope Francis is sharing the details of his life in a new memoir being released today. Life, My Story Through History, sees the Holy Father talk about his 87 years of life as revealed to co-author Fabio Marchese Ragona in hours of interviews. An Italian newspaper released excerpts last week, one of which showed that Pope Francis is not considering resigning from the papacy, something he has said repeatedly. But he said in the interview, if he did resign, he would take the title of Bishop Emeritus of Rome, live at St. Mary Major, and spend his retiring hearing his retirement hearing confessions and bringing communion to the sick. And March Madness is here. The NCAA tournament begins with two matchups in the first four, tipping off just about 45 minutes north of me in Dayton today. A battle for the 16th seed in the West region takes place between Wagner and Howard, while Colorado State and Virginia square off for the right to be the 10th seed in the Midwest. The first four wraps up tomorrow when Grambling State and Montana face off for the 16th seed in the Midwest region, while Colorado and Boise State duel for the 10th seed in the South. The first round of the tournament tips off on Thursday with 16 games. There you have it, folks. Paul Lockman was just talking about this is the best time in sports. We got baseball spring training in full swing pun intended and uh march madness opening day will be is it next week paul next week it's during holy week which is kind of crazy but alas what are you gonna do at least baseball is beginning today is tuesday march the 19th thanks so much for joining us here on the sunrise morning show on the ewtn global catholic radio network it's seven past joining us again on the sunrise morning show is dr benjamin lewis he's director of translation services for the international commission on english in the liturgy good morning dr lewis Good morning, Annie. How are you? I am doing fine. And so March 19th, the Solemnity of St. Joseph, um, you know, when I'm thinking about the importance of any given feast day, Dr. Lewis, you'll be, I think, pleased to hear that I look at my breviary. Now, I use the Christian Prayer, the one volume. Oh, so yeah, that's a good one. When, uh, when I look in the back where it has the feast days, you know that there's some importance if a saint gets a special closing prayer during morning prayer. I really right. notice when there's a special antiphon for the Canticle of Zechariah with the rest of morning prayer as normal. And then, then there are the feasts that you're told to use the Sunday week one Psalms and they have special antiphons for each of them. And that is a big deal feast, which is what we get for the solemnity of saint joseph but one thing i didn't know to look for was if it has a special hymn probably because i don't sing when i do morning <laughs> prayer dr lewis but uh, that's, that's fine that's, that's fine. the case for saint joseph isn't it yes he has his own special hymn uh for his feast day in fact he's got a special hymn for his solemnity on uh the 19th of march and he also gets his own special hymn um for may 1st the feast of joseph the worker oh, nice. so if you look right now in your breviary um at morning prayer for the solemnity of saint joseph you will find there a hymn joseph patron saint of workers 
Mm -hmm. And if you think to yourself, wait a minute, that sounds like a hymn to St. Joseph the Worker. It, it is actually the same hymn that's currently used in English uh, for May 1st, the Feast of Joseph, Joseph the Worker. But it's actually, um, it's just a plug in. It's a text that was written in the in the 1960s. It's a fine hymn, and if you sing it uh, or recite it, um, it's it's good. It's a good one, but it's actually not a translation of the Latin text that the Church proposes for us um, for the feast for the Solemnity of Saint Joseph, which is actually the text that the Church proposes for us is a different text for the Solemnity than for May 1st. Really? So the Church actually has two different texts, which um, up until now we haven't really had an a, a, a distinct difference in English, um, but you can purchase the Divine Office hymnal, and it will be coming out in the new version of the Breviary when that um, when that comes out in a couple of years. So there's a, a new translation of a text. Um, it's a it's a it's quite an interesting meter if you're if you're a geek like me and you're interested <laughs> in um, metrical patterns. So if you're if you're keeping score at home. This is uh, known as the sapphic meter. And if you're a really, really um, classical metrics nerd, this is the lesser sapphic, not mm. the greater sapphic. So if it sounds a little bit different metrically, um, that's why. So this is the translation we've done of the text that the church proposes for the solemnity of St. Joseph for the morning prayer hymn. Well, please take it away. Give us the translation. Joseph, high honor of the saints in heaven, hope that sustains us for our world a pillar. Graciously listen as we sing your praises, greatly rejoicing. God the Creator made you son of David, spouse of the Virgin, and by his ordaining, you were called father of the Word incarnate for our salvation. One with his mother, you were first to worship the world's redeemer lying in a manger. You gazed rejoicing on the child whom prophets sang and prefigured. He rules creation, king of kings and master. Heavens before him bow in adoration while demons tremble at his gaze and judgment, yet he obeys you. Praise everlasting to the triune Godhead, who grants you, Joseph, great and glorious honors. Through your great merits may we find true gladness, life with the blessed. Amen. Wow. That is incredible and beautiful and i have so many things i want to ask you about with this um i i, I want to know what what stands out to you first but um well no first well gosh we're already running out of time dr lewis but can you please reflect on the fact demons tremble and yet he obeys you of course saint joseph yeah. the terror of demons that's incredible right. yeah this is a wonderful reflection on the great paradoxes of our faith and, and sort of reflecting on the incarnation through through the eyes of Joseph. It's it's you know, we don't hear a lot about Joseph. He's 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 not just second fiddle. He's third fiddle in, mm -hmm. the, in the Holy Family. And but that's what makes him a wonderful example for us as Christians and a great patron for the church is his whole life is marked by service to the Blessed Virgin and and to the Son of God. And so that's what makes him a high honor of the saints in heaven is that he's so humble and righteous, and he lives such a simple life of dedication and faith. It's that whole inversion of the last shall be first and the first shall be last. So he, here he is. Um, he has this great privilege of being the foster father of, of the Son of God and the spouse of the Blessed Virgin. And here, you know, here Christ is the, the very one whom demons tremble at his gaze and judgment, and yet Christ is obedient to Joseph. What a wonderful paradox and a, a gift to reflect on uh, for his feast day. Oh my gosh. There's so much more that I want to talk to you about with this. We could talk for an hour about the translation of, right. this, of this particular hymn, but we have to leave it there on that beautiful reflection from you. Maybe we can pick it up 
next time since we'll still be in the month of St. Joseph. Sure, um, sure. Quite possibly. So we'll see. We'll see. But in the meantime, you said this is in the Divine Office hymnal? It is, yeah. So GIA Music is currently publishing the Divine Office hymnal, and you can order a copy online from GIAMusic.com. And you can find ISOL linked at Sunrise Morning Show. Com. Gosh, you know, that's going to be a tough decision next week because it's Holy Week, and I'm sure he's got all kinds of good things to talk to us about with Holy Week, but it's also the last week of March, which is the month dedicated to St. Joseph. There's so many. It's like choosing between a good and a good. What are you going to do? Anyway, we'll, we'll handle that next week. We got headlines coming up next. You're listening to the Sunrise Morning Show on EWTN Radio. Stay with us. It's quarter past. Are you longing to hear God's voice? Lord, teach me to pray. The free Ignatian prayer series will open your heart to his voice, to the peace you're seeking, and the only love that fulfills the human heart, Jesus. God is calling you to true joy by knowing Jesus personally. Lord Teach Me to Pray is free. Just go to lordteachmetopray.com and click on the red box and order the Lord Teach Me to Pray series. Again, that's lordteachmetopray.com. For more than 150 years, the Comboni missionaries have traveled to nearly every corner of the world. Founded by St. Daniel Comboni, we are an international Catholic organization dedicated to ministering the world's poorest and most abandoned people. Your donations make a huge impact, and 95% are used to fund our many projects. Find out more at ComboniMissionaries.org. That is ComboniMissionaries.org. Have you subscribed to get the Sunrise Morning Show show notes? When you subscribe, the show notes arrive in your inbox weekday mornings with the list of featured guests, books, articles, and websites we'll discuss. And then you'll also get the podcast with markers to quickly find and hear an interview again or to see the Sunrise Morning Show on video. So to know when your favorite guests are on, go to sunrisemorningshow.com and click subscribe. Bible in a Year with me, Father Mike Schmitz, is now available right here on Catholic Radio. Encounter God's voice and learn how to live life through the lens of Scripture with a new episode every day. I hope you'll join me as we discover how the story of salvation unfolds and how we fit into that story today. Bible in a Year and Catechism in a Year with Father Mike Schmitz, tonight at 10 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Pacific on EWTN Radio. 17 past now on the Sunrise Morning Show. Let's take a look at headlines. Pope Francis today has appointed a new bishop for the Diocese of La Crosse, Wisconsin. Nearly a thousand Americans have reached out to the State Department at this point for help in Haiti, where gang violence has plunged the nation into chaos and Pope Francis's new memoir, Life, My Story Through History, is being released today. Next newscast coming up in about 12 minutes from now as the Sunrise Morning Show continues here on the EWTN Global Catholic Radio Network. I believe it's uh, the 11th anniversary today of the Pope's installation in the chair of Peter, of course, You don't get ordained pope, Um, but this was the day that the Holy Father chose to, um, you know, officially be installed as pope. And I remember that quite well uh, because 11 years ago, our um, affiliate here in Cincinnati, Sacred Heart Radio, had scheduled a membership drive that day. And then we found out that the newly elected pope was going to be installed that day. So we had to, you know, kind of shuffle things around and um, we didn't get to go straight through with uh, with begging completely that day. Because, of course, that's a huge day in the church when a pope gets installed. And so we ran the mass. Um, But at the time... 
it's so funny looking back on this now because you know we didn't really know anything about uh cardinal bergoglio who had just been elected and taken the name of of pope francis so you know we're used to benedict the 16th and and these lengthy in-depth like just really rich homilies and discourses but particularly his homilies during mass and i remember you know ewtn would always slate like i don't know two hours for a mass like this you think that the mass is going to take two hours and then we get pope francis and he gives like a five minute homily and i don't mean that as a criticism it was just I mean, that was a huge change, um, particularly for us in, in Catholic media, when, when you're planning for things like this and how much time are you going to allot and make sure that you have things to run once, um, once something like a papal mass is over. And <laughs> now I don't, I doubt, I mean, I don't know, maybe maybe EWTN still slates like two hours for coverage of a mass like that. But with Pope Francis, things are much shorter, much shorter when it comes to those homilies, which is something he's encouraged priests to do too. So I guess he, he puts his money where his mouth is, literally. It's 21 past. I'm Father Rob Jack. Join me this afternoon for Driving Home to Faith, where Dr. Joseph Salot will discuss over-the-counter contraceptives and abortion pills. Alan Migliorato will share his adventure Catholic parenting tip this week. I'll reflect on the solemnity of St. Joseph, the spouse of Mary, plus frequent traffic and weather to get you home safely. That's this afternoon beginning at 4 on Sacred Heart Radio. You're on the road to Christ the King. Driving home to faith. Support for Sacred Art Radio is from Andiamo Artisan Bakery in Hamilton's German Village, featuring authentic Italian sweets to grace your table, such as Sicilian almond paste cookies, cannoli, and tiramisu. Celebrate the season with Irish soda bread and St. Joseph's bread. And for Easter, sweet ricotta pies and walnut kolache, in-store or online at andiamo-artisan-bakery.com. That's A-N-D-I-A-M-O, andiamo-artisan-bakery.com. Hi, I'm Anna Mitchell, MC for Heartbeats for Life 5K, sponsored by Cincinnati Right to Life, Saturday, April 20th at Lunkin Airport Playfield. It's a day of food, family, and fun to keep hearts beating in Ohio. Register at CincinnatiRightToLife.org. Support for Sacred Heart Radio is from Central Fabricators. Central Fabricators is currently seeking welders for their ASME code fabrication shop. They're looking for hardworking professionals who enjoy meeting challenges and surpassing customer expectations. Candidates are required to have experience in fit-up and welding. This is long-term employment in a secure, rewarding full-time career with a four-day work week, health care and dental benefits, and paid vacations. More information at centralfabricators.com. That's centralfabricators.com. Support for Sacred Heart Radio is from Rose Automotive, serving the Hamilton area with a wide selection of pre-owned cars, trucks, and SUVs. Rose Automotive, celebrating over 30 years of automotive excellence. On Erie Highway in Hamilton, roseautomotivegroup.com. Happy to welcome back to the Sunrise Morning Show, Father Peregrine Fletcher. He's a Norbertine priest at St. Michael's in California, and he's got a new children's book that he wrote and illustrated called The Snail and the King. Father Peregrine, welcome back. Thanks so much for having me. What a, what a great honor to be here with you this morning. It is a great honor to have you, and I'm excited to talk about this darling little story. Um, give us give us a rundown of this story, Father. Sure. Well, the story is um, a parable of sorts, and uh, I wrote it, gosh, 11 years ago. Wow. Uh, and it was more, more than anything a reflection of really my own uh, kind of thought process in, number one, the discernment of uh, my vocation. And at a time in my life where I was wondering, oh my goodness, what is God going to do with me? I'm feeling so slow. And this idea of a parable, this parable came to mind of a snail who's going to need some help if he is going to make it on the journey of a lifetime uh, which the king is asking him and giving him this great honor, along with all of these creatures in the forest, to join him. So it's a story that reflects our human life and discernment and vocation, 
um, that we are given an amazing supernatural divine destiny, but we often feel too weak to accomplish that or to uh, to reach it. And yet, we realize that in our weakness, God is actually not only giving us the invitation, but also the means of arriving at our final uh, home, uh, our heavenly home coming. So in any case, this little illustrated parable came to life uh, in my own vocational discernment uh, struggles and uh, the great hope that God had given me as I was realizing he's going to take care of me. Yeah. So I wanted to share this with, uh, with, with, with all of you, too. Well, and lest anyone think from the title, The Snail and the King, that doesn't sound very Catholic. I'm going to read you the first page here. It says, Once a king sent his own son deep into the wild. He also sent the royal dove, which flew behind this child. Gee, Father, what do they represent? Oh, right. Well, I really wanted uh, the tone of this book uh, to start out with uh, the Holy Trinity and realizing that we have uh, this, um, we have such an amazing uh, God who has uh, helped us in so many ways, and the three persons of the Trinity uh, are constantly working for our good. And so I simply wanted that that to be the real tone of the book. Like, listen, we've got we've got an almighty, all-powerful God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit who have called us home to heaven. And no matter how slow we feel, uh, we've got the most amazing uh, and incredible uh, graces coming from our God. Now, uh, tell us about this snail, Father. <laughs> Sure. Well, a lot of a lot of people have asked me, like, why a snail? Because there are a lot of. Uh, if, if I was trying to uh, write a story about a difficult journey for an animal, you know, why not others? And I guess, in a way, I loved the contrast of this, you know, Almighty King uh, who sent this invitation to all the creatures, and this tiny little snail uh, who, of himself, really should have no hope of actually reaching uh, the king. Um, a, you know, a snail is obviously so incredibly slow and so incredibly small and very, very fragile. You know, most people mm -hmm. uh, don't even even notice uh, the snail along the way. And in fact, many, uh, of course, would consider and, and even rightly so in some natural ways, a snail to be a pest. Uh, so why even bother? But the king, while everyone else may look at this snail as a pest, as uh, as insignificant, as not uh, not able, not strong enough. Um, really, the snail represents uh, the, the, the scriptures. Uh, when I am uh, weak, then I am strong. And God chose the weak of this world to shame the strong. And in my mind, the snail uh, represents that in so, so many ways. Yeah. Talk about the other creatures that uh, the snail encounters who, right. at least on the surface, seem like they are much more equipped for a journey yeah. to the king's yeah. castle. Right. So there are a number, all the creatures are invited and anyone can come uh, to the king's castle. And there are three creatures in particular who uh, uh, represent uh, a kind of worldly uh, strength, and that is the horse the bear and the lion and if you if you watch them closely throughout the book hopefully the the catholic reader will start to see uh okay these are creatures they're relying on their own strength they think they're going to make it because of their own power and hopefully as i mentioned the catholic reader will see in them a reflection of the uh, the three main battles of our uh, spiritual life or i should say the three main temptations or sources of temptations the world the flesh and the devil uh, the bear is so hungry for uh, food, and his gluttony leads him to feed his own flesh, and he, he stays mm. here. He stays in the, the kingdom. The, the, the horse, uh, she decides to leave the king's path because she doesn't believe him anymore. She chooses this world, and of course, the lion wants to rule this world, and he aligns himself with the prince of this world and becomes a kind of figure of, of the devil. And so because they align themselves with temp the temp their temptations, they don't reach the king. Well, Father, I really appreciate this book as a parent um, in, in the message of perseverance in the spiritual life for our children and the message for me as a parent to not rush 
my children in the spiritual life, that my goal (laughs) is to help them desire to be in that castle with our king. The book is called The Snail and the King, and you can find it linked at sunrisemorningshow.com. Father Peregrine, thank you so much. What a blessing to be here. Thank you so much, Anna. The blessing was all mine, Father. Gotta love little parables like that that make the parent think probably more than the kid. We got a lot to learn, moms and dads. We really do. We really do. Anyway, you can find all of our guests linked at sonrisemorningshow.com. Half past the hour now on the Sunrise Morning Show. It's time for news. Pope Francis today has appointed a new bishop for the Diocese of La Crosse, Wisconsin. Up until now, Bishop Gerard Battersby has been serving as an auxiliary bishop in the Archdiocese of Detroit since 2017. He is taking over for the retiring Bishop William Patrick Callahan, who at 73 is retiring a little bit early. Nearly a thousand Americans have reached out to the State Department to help for help in Haiti, where ga- gang violence has plunged the nation into chaos. Mark Mayfield reports. A State Department spokesperson says people have been filling out crisis intake forms online as the U.S. tries to get people out on chartered flights. Not all of the people who filled out a form are trying to leave, but many are, and the government continues to evaluate transportation options. More than 30 Americans were evacuated Sunday to Miami. I'm Mark Mayfield. Primary elections are set for five states today, though both President Biden and former President Trump have already clinched their respected respective parties' nominations. Arizona, Florida, Illinois, Kansas, and Ohio, nonetheless, are all holding elections today. Trump visited Ohio over the weekend, while Biden will be making stops in Arizona and Nevada today. Pope Francis is sharing the details of his life in a new memoir being released today on this 11th anniversary of his installation as Pope. Life, My Story Through History sees the Holy Father talking about his 87 years of life as revealed to co-author Fabio Marchese Ragona in hours of interviews. An Italian newspaper released excerpts last week. Vatican News reports the book spans more than 300 pages and covers all aspects of the Holy Father's life, from his relationship with his family and especially his grandparents, their emigration to Argentina in 1929, a, quote, little derailment during his seminary period, as well as World War II. One excerpt released last week showed Pope Francis still is not considering resigning from the papacy. He has repeated that many times. But he said if he did resign, he would take the title of Bishop Emeritus of Rome, live at St. Mary Major, and spend his retirement hearing confessions and bringing communion to the sick. Ahead of EU parliamentary elections this summer, Caritas Europe is urging candidates to embrace policies that reflect the values of solidarity, respect of human rights, and global justice. From Vatican Radio, Lisa Zingarini reports. In the memorandum, Caritas Europe outlines five key issues that should be prioritized by the next European Parliament and Commission The first recommendation is to guarantee effective, adequate and inclusive labour markets and social protection for all by carefully monitoring the full implementation of the 20 principles of the European pillar of social rights and asking in particular the European Commission to present a proposal for a directive framework of minimum income standards within the Parliament's next mandate. According to Caritas, the second priority is to guarantee high-quality, accessible and affordable social services for all, also by supporting providers of non-profit services. The memorandum goes on to address the hot-button issue of migration, urging European leaders to promote migration and asylum policies that respect EU values, the UN Refugee Convention, human rights and the dignity of all people. Caritas calls in particular for promoting expanded safe and regular pathways to Europe for people in need of international protection. 
The fourth recommendation calls for promoting locally led humanitarian action and development in the EU's external action. Finally, Caritas Europe urges the EU political leaders to actively support efforts for justice and sustainable development in the global south. According to the Catholic organization, the European Parliament must be a leading voice pushing for EU institutions to avoid inward-looking and short-term strategies and rather promote fair policies, especially in the sectors of trade, agriculture and migration. I am Lisa Zingarini. That's the news. You're listening to the Sunrise Morning Show. It's 35 minutes past the hour. Can you spare an hour for the unborn? 40 Days for Life vigils are being held through Good Friday in Cincinnati, Dayton, and Hamilton. To sign up for an hour of prayer, go to 40daysforlife.com and search by the city name. Support for Sacred Heart Radio is from Schneller Knockelman Plumbing, Heating, and Air. Water heaters, plumbing repair, and drain cleaning backed by Schneller Knockelman's 100% satisfaction guarantee. Schneller Knockelman at SK. SKPHA.com. SKPHA.com. Support for Sacred Heart Radio is from Trinity Church Supply, providing church supplies and religious gifts worldwide. From Catholic greeting cards, books, and willow tree to sterling silver medals, rosary, sacramental gifts, and statues. Trinity Church Supply, 5479 North Bend Road. Why wait in endless lines at the pharmacy when Brozard Pharmacy, a proud supporter of Sacred Heart Radio, can fill your prescriptions in a timely manner with high quality? Brozard Pharmacy, fast, friendly service without the wait. 513-941-0428. It's 24 minutes before the hour on the Solemnity of St. Joseph, Tuesday, March the 19th. Your forecast is brought to you on Sacred Heart Catholic Radio by Schneller Knockelman Plumbing, Heating, and Air online at skpha.com. Windy, but a little warmer today. Right now, temperatures in the lower 30s as you're heading out the door. For Cincinnati, mostly sunny skies today with a high of 52 degrees. A few clouds tonight with an overnight low of 36. Mostly sunny and breezy again tomorrow with a high of 51 degrees. For the Miami Valley Dayton area, increasing winds and a mix of clouds and sun today with a high of 52 degrees. A few clouds tonight and an overnight low of 37 It'll be mostly sunny skies tomorrow and a high of 48 degrees. This is Sacred Heart Catholic Radio, 740 a.m., 9, 10 a.m. Online at sacredheartradio.com. It's 37 minutes past the hour. You're listening to the Sunrise Morning Show on the EWTN Global Catholic Radio Network. Happy Solemnity of St. Joseph. Steve Ray back with us now on the Sunrise Morning Show from CatholicConvert.com where you can read his blog and check out what pilgrimages he has coming up. Good morning, Steve. Good morning, Annie. Nice to talk with you today. It is nice to talk to you. And speaking of those pilgrimages, I know that the Holy Land has kind of been a a precarious place and so travel kind of limited there, but uh, you've been making up for it in terms of European pilgrimages. Is that right? Right. Yeah, we're going to Ireland. We're doing the St. Paul cruise. We just added a trip to the Saints and Shrines of France. Nice. And um, we're we're leaving for Lourdes and Fatima in a couple of weeks. It's not too light to get on that one, but I know for a lot of people it's too quick, but we are, we got a nice group going to Lourdes and Fatima. And so we we are, um, we got one going to Wisconsin too, the Shrines of Wisconsin with Cardinal Burke. So that's, uh, that one you don't get jet lag. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> I get jet lag no matter what, but um, but I totally get it. So we are talking about bones and tombs in the Bible. Start us off with the stats. How many times do we see those words? Yeah, I thought with Easter coming up and the bones of our Lord are going to be put in a tomb and he's going to raise from the dead. This would be a good topic. Yeah. Well, bones, the word bones are used 118 times, but only four times in the New Testament. That's very really interesting huh. to me. Um, and, and I found out that bones, uh, this was new information for me. Bones only last about 20 years if they're put in the ground unprotected. Really? They eventually just disintegrate and become um, part of the dirt. But uh, tomb is used 92 times, and it and it comes from a, wor- a root word meaning to remember. 
that was an interesting thing for me too, that mm. uh, the word tomb can either be a grave, a cave, some kind of a memorial. And it mean, and it comes from the root word to remember. Wow. And buried is 827 times. Oh, so it wow. just shows that in the Bible, after the sin of Adam and Eve, we do become dust again. Well, speaking of Adam and Eve, it's actually Adam who used the word bones first in Scripture. Yeah, I can imagine him seeing Eve for the first time when he woke up after God put him to sleep and he woke up and opened his eyes and saw her. He must have just been, oh, my goodness, is she beautiful. This is the bone. This is at last bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she's taken out of man. And that actually is a, it's a word play because woman incorporates the word man but uh yeah it's bones of my bone how does he why does he say that because obviously a rib was taken out and that rib was fashioned into his bride so that's where bones were used and the last time the word bones are used is in the book of hebrews where it's actually referring back to genesis and joseph is saying make sure when i when you take me back he was the one who was in charge of egypt that took care of his brothers there but when he says, when you take me back, make sure you take my bones back with you. Why? Because bones, we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Bones are important. They are who we really are. They're part of us. We're not just a spirit. We are body and spirit, body and soul. And the bones carried with them out of Egypt because he didn't want us, his bones to stay in Egypt because that's not the promised land. He wanted his bones to be buried in the promised land. So the first time is Adam referring to bone, to Eve, bones of my bones. And the last time is Joseph reminding wow. them to take his bones to Egypt. Did out Jesus of, ever Egypt. talk about bones, Steve? <laughs> Well, he did, and it kind of it, we. I I have a blog I put up a while ago called "Is Jesus Was Jesus Nice?" Um, <laughs> and here it says, "Woe to you! Woe means something bad's mm -hmm. coming. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! You whitewash tombs, which are outwardly appear beautiful, but within you're full of dead men's bones and uncleanness." Wow. So he refers to the scribes and Pharisees, the religious leaders of the day, as dead men's bones. You're like a tomb full of dead men's bones and uncleanness. And then you, Jews couldn't walk, couldn't touch bones or graves because they'd become ceremonially unclean and have to go through a cleansing process. So Jesus said, woe to you. You are like unmarked graves and oh. people walk over them without knowing it. In other words, wow. you you trick people. You're an unmarked grave, and people walk over, and they become unclean, and they don't even realize it by being with you. Wow. That's, you know, if you ask the question of Jesus is nice, no, he was loving, but he wasn't always nice. That is quite an insult when you think about <laughs> it. That's incredible. For a Jew. Um, yeah, yeah, exactly. And I mean, speaking of bones, and you talked about placing the bones of our Lord in the tomb, this is something that was prophesied in Scripture. Yes, it, uh, Jesus's tomb was going to be with the uh, with the rich man. It says in Scripture that he was going to be buried. But it also says, let's do this one first. That he, the prophecy Psalm twenty two is a messianic prophecy, meaning that it's all it really was written with Jesus in mind. He, and it says, I am poured out like water and all my bones are out of joint. Mm. My heart is like wax is melted. I can count my bones. They stare and gloat over me, the Jews do. But the, his bones are all out of joint because he's been jerked around. And you know, if you get jerked too much, your bones get pulled out of joint. Yeah. And, and you can count them because they're also painful. It, it, it's obviously a little exaggeration there, but... And that, and also said that the um, the lamb that was offered at Passover could not have his bones broken, and that just, that was a prophecy wow. also because Jesus is our Passover lamb on the cross, and his bones couldn't be broken. One of my favorite about the bones is whenever you see a like an icon or a painting of the crucifixion, oftentimes, more times than not, you see a skull at the bottom, uh, at oh, the foot yeah. of the cross. And that's a tradition. That's the skull of Adam yeah. because the, the tradition is that Adam's skull was there and the blood of the new Adam dripped on the blood of the old Adam to bring wow. redemption. Wow. Yeah, I know the, the, the tomb or the chapel of Adam is there in, in the Church of the Holy Sepulcher, which leads yep. us to a discussion about tombs. What do we need to know, Steve? 
Well, the tombs, it, you, they're buried one of two ways in Israel. You were buried in a shallow grave and then covered with rocks. That's one way to put you in the mm -hmm. ground. But the, that was usually for the poor people or if you're in a hurry. When Jacob was going on his way to Bethlehem and his wife Rachel died in childbirth, they buried her on the side of the road outside of Bethlehem. And it would have been a shallow grave covered with rocks so that animals couldn't get in and eat the body. But often if you were rich or you were wealthy, you were put in a cave. And in fact, like Joseph of Arimathea, it says in Matthew 27, mm -hmm. he had a family grave cave built for his family. And what they would do is they'd have niches and they'd put a body in here and another body would go in that niche and another body in there. And they'd roll the stone, big round stone in front of the gate, uh, the door so nobody could get in. And in uh, that when the bones were left dry, when the body rotted away and all that was left is the bones, they would put those in what's called an ossuary, which was in a small container that they would keep the bones. And then they'd put another body in that niche and wait mm -hmm. for the flesh to rot off of it. And then they'd take those bones out and put them in an ossuary. Ossuary means a bone place where they kept the bones. Mm -hmm. And also, I know we only have a minute left, but the Christians really thought differently than the Romans did, uh, the Jews and the Christians actually they forbid cremation because for the Romans cremation meant that you were denying the bodily resurrection yeah. the body was dead and gone so just burn it but the Christians said no we and the Romans also buried in a place called necropolis the place of the dead the city of the dead necro means death and crop up polis means city necropolis necropolis is a dead city of the dead wow. and but the cat the Christians said no we put the them in a cemetery which means sleeping place and they deposited them they didn't bury them yeah. they said we're going to deposit them because we're going to come back for a withdrawal the lord yeah. so thank you annie steve this was incredible and if listeners want to uh check out maybe they want to get in on that pilgrimage to lords and fatima how can they get more info catholicconvert.com catholicconvert.com everything's there linked at sunrise morning show.com steve thanks so much Thank you, Annie. All right. Coming up next on the Sunrise Morning Show, Chris McGregor joins us with this week's selection from the Office of Readings. It's 14 till. Born from the heart of St. Daniel Comboni, the Comboni missionaries have served the poorest and most abandoned people in the world for more than 150 years. The Combonis improve quality of life with resources like food, clean water, and medicine. They provide vital education in schools and spiritually minister through the sacraments, all while preparing local Christian leaders to serve their people now and in the future. Find out more at ComboniMissionaries.org. Are you looking for peace, longing for joy? Want to meet the giver of all goodness? God is calling the laity to bring Ignatian prayer into a suffering world. Work for the new evangelization. Go to LordTeachMeToPray.com. Order your free digital training and manual. Find true happiness and everlasting joy. Go to LordTeachMeToPray.com and click on the red button today. It's free. Approved by the USCCB. Giving up coffee for Lent? Look no further than the Mystic Monks for a great selection of their Mystica tea to get you through the season. And when you shop their site for tea or coffee, after clicking the Mystic Monk link at sunrisemorningshow.com, you earn us a commission. While you're at our site, check out our online store where you can purchase Sunrise Morning Show mugs and travel mugs. Find our mugs and link to Mystic Monk coffee and tea at sonrisemorningshow.com. That's sunrisemorningshow.com. Hi, this is Mike Aquilina with a few words about St. Gregory of Nazianzus. St. Gregory of Nazianzus just wanted to live a solitary life and write poetry about God. But his dad pressured him to become a priest. And then his friend pressured him to become a bishop. The world was troubled by heresy, and Gregory spoke clearly against it and exercised leadership for the winning side at the First Council of Constantinople. Then he retired and wrote his poetry about God. On the next More to Life, mountains and molehills. Do you feel like everything's getting to you? We'll help you dial down your distress. That's later today on More to Life. Now back to the Sunrise Morning Show. It's 11 till now on the Sunrise Morning Show. Let's take a look at headlines. 
Pope Francis today has appointed Detroit Auxiliary Bishop Gerard Battersby as the next bishop for the Diocese of La Crosse. Primary elections are set for five states today and on this anniversary of his installation as Pope, a new memoir of Pope Francis is coming out called Life, My Story Through History. You can hear news at the top and bottom of each hour right here on the Sunrise Morning Show. Chris McGregor back with us now on the Sunrise Morning Show from DiscerningHearts.com. Good morning, Chris. Good morning, Anna. How are you today? I am doing great and very excited to talk to you about our selection this week from the Office of Readings for the March 19th Solemnity of St. Joseph. And of course, the entire month of March dedicated to St. Joseph. And uh, this coming from a sermon by St. Bernadine of Siena, who was a pretty good preacher, wasn't he? Pretty good preacher. Very popular guy. Yes. As a matter of fact, so much so that he was canonized only six years after his death. Wow. Now, Pope Fran or no, not Pope Francis, but St. Francis had been canonized. I think it was only four years, which is awfully quick. But for St. Bernadine to be canonized that quickly, that says something about the universal's uh, santo subito. You know, saint, yeah. here it is. Here's the saint. And it was because of his incredible preaching. And he was also a reformer of the Franciscan order, mm. which is sometimes necessary. You know, after a founder dies, sometimes factions will take, take the charism in particular tracks that probably shouldn't go. But St. Bernadine of Siena came in, that a great Italian priest and missionary. We're, we're so blessed to have him and his reflections for today. Yeah, he was the one of, well, one of a number of different saints, I think, but uh, associated with Bonfire of the Vanities, I think. Is that right? Mm, I think. Yeah, something very similar to that. Yeah. His, you know, he, go ahead. His feast is uh, my husband's birthday, and I've always wanted to have a bonfire to celebrate my husband's birthday in honor of St. Bernardine of Siena. That's... Nothing's stopping you. <laughs> Just go get that fire pick, eat yeah, your Weber exactly. kettle out. Exactly. Exactly. Well, uh, let's look at these reflections that he has on St. Joseph. It starts off with this because I just think this is so beautiful. There is a general rule concerning all special graces granted to any human being. Whenever the divine favor chooses someone to receive a special grace or to accept a lofty vocation, God adorns the person chosen with all the gifts of the spirit needed to fulfill the task at hand. How does he go on to talk about that in light of St. Joseph? Well, St. Joseph, as that earthly guardian of Jesus and the spouse of Mary, exemplifies this principle, doesn't it? Profoundly. Mm -hmm. Being divinely selected to protect God's most pre precious treasures. And so, and that's really true for all of us. I mean, you see particular founders of religious orders they all have particular charisms and gifts. Not everybody will have what they have. Usually it entails a great deal of suffering um, and as a part of that experience. And I don't doubt that St. Joseph had that as well, but he was good and faithful servant. And God would call him, as St. Bernard Bernardine would say, to enter into the joy of your Lord. Yeah. And of course, that means to, to join into heaven. And that was his goal. And, and, he, and he served the Lord so well. He did. And St. Bernadine brings up how, I, I, I love this line too, Chris, and maybe you can, can reflect on this. It says, in him, the Old Testament finds its fitting close. And, and this, I thought, was so cool because when you think about physically reading a Bible and you end the Old Testament and you flip the page and you have the Gospel of Matthew beginning with the genealogy of Jesus, which culminates in St. Joseph, which puts Jesus in the line of David. That's right. And it exemplifies again the, uh, the fact that the scriptures are a living word. It's a living word of God that for Joseph, his life would be the culmination of the Old Testament. Yeah. 
He was the embodiment of the fulfillment of the prophecies and promises through his care of Jesus. And that connection to the lineage of the patriarchs and the prophets, it shows that it, it, there's a plan, just like as there's a plan to the universe, to the order of life, and every, all the structure, God's action in his beloved creative beings, which we'll hear at the Easter Vigil, he, when he created, he found them very good. Mm-hmm. He had th- this 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 plan to bring them all to him. And Joseph in his life was that embodiment of of the the fully human. And through and he was born, he had original sin, just the, like the rest of us. And yet he was equipped with all the special graces granted as Bernadine says in the very beginning to any human being when they are called for a very special and lofty vocation. Absolutely. I mean, um, Dr. John Bergsma and I have talked about Joseph before. When you read the genealogy of Jesus, Joseph, if times had been different when he lived, would have been the reigning king of Israel. I mean, he is the descendant of David and, and, and so brings this whole new light to the idea of Jesus as king, like, as the son of Joseph would have literally been king. I mean, it's just like it's amazing to think about. And 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 what St. Bernadine brings out here, he says, obviously Christ does not now deny to Joseph that intimacy that they had. He says, reverence and very high honor, which he gave him on earth as a son to his father. Rather, we must say that in heaven, Christ now completes and perfects all that he gave at Nazareth, which means we here in the church rightly give Joseph honor and praise and can go to him as an intercessor. Oh, I'm so glad you brought that up. I mean, he's he is what kingship looks like, what leadership truly looks like. And what was his what what was the kingdom that he served? It was the kingdom of God yeah. that he served and he and he took care of. We need more leaders like Joseph, don't we? Amen. And uh, just to close out this sermon, St. Bernadine prays, remember us, St. Joseph, and plead for us to your foster child. Ask your most holy bride, the Virgin Mary, to look kindly upon us, since she is the mother of him who with the Father and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns eternally. Amen. Amen. We've been talking. Amen. Amen. We've been talking to Chris McGregor, and you can find discerninghearts.com linked at sunrisemorningshow.com. Chris, thank you. Thanks, Anna. What a great day to be with you. Every day is great, but this one, yay, St. Joseph. Absolutely. And that'll do it for this national edition of the Sunrise Morning Show. God bless you and keep you in great Bill Levitt here, grateful to all who accepted our invitation to join our family and all who renewed your membership, helping to raise nearly $95,000 during Sacred Heart Radio's Lenten Membership Drive. Thank you. Of course, we still have a little ways to go to reach our $120,000 goal. So to activate your membership, visit sacredheartradio.com and click donate or use Venmo at Sacred Heart Radio. Thanks again. And please keep telling everyone about Sacred Heart Radio and the Sacred Heart Radio app. Support for Sacred Heart Radio is from Hoting Realtors. The trusted professionals at Hoting Realtors have been serving neighbors, family, and friends in the tri-state Catholic communities for over 30 years. 513-451-4800 and at Hoting.com. Support for Sacred Heart Radio is from Rua Wood Psychological Services, integrating psychological science and the truths of our Catholic faith with offices in Dayton and Cincinnati. More information at 513-407-8878 or rwpsych.org. Support for Sacred Heart Radio is from Dr. Robert Berger at Beacon Orthopedics and Sports Medicine. Dr. Berger has been recognized by Cincinnati Magazine nearly every year over the past 20 years as one of the top physicians in orthopedic surgery, and he serves as team physician for Xavier University Mount St. Joseph University and LaSalle High School. Dr. Berger treats patients of all ages at the Beacon West office on Harrison Avenue and on the east side at Cincinnati Sports Club. For more information, 513-354-3700. Online at beaconortho.com. You rely on your car, so rely on the experts at Fort Mitchell Garage, a proud supporter of Sacred Heart Radio. They can do it all from brakes, tires, and heating and cooling to towing and collision repair and more. Fort Mitchell Garage on Dixie Highway in Park Hills. On the web at fortmitchellgarage.com. 
Working to see the culture of life prevail in the Miami Valley, Dayton Right to Life is here to protect God's gift of life through law, education, and community action, from fertilization to natural death. Find Dayton Right to Life online at DaytonLife.org. That's DaytonLife.org. The Cincinnati Chapter of Legatus is a national network of Catholic business owners, CEOs, and managing partners facing the challenges of faith, family, and business each day. We meet once a month with our spouse for a mass, dinner, and speaker. We have the support of the Archdiocese of Cincinnati and many members throughout the parishes, including yours. We would appreciate the chance to share what we are about with you and enjoy Mass together soon. Contact us at Cincinnati at Legatus.org. That's Cincinnati at Legatus.org. Support for Sacred Heart Radio is from Molly Maid of Westchester. Insured, screened, and drug-free employees deliver service with a 100% satisfaction guarantee. 1-800-MOLLY-MAID or at mollymaid.com. Molly Maid, a clean you can trust. I'm Father Jacob Verges from St. Peter and Paul, California, Kentucky. Thank you for listening to Sacred Heart Catholic Radio. 740 WNOP Newport, 910 WPFB Middletown, or get the app, stream, podcast, and more at sacredheartradio.com.